Without further ado, I bring you the Director of Dance at the National Endowment for the Arts, Sarah Nash. Sarah? Great, thank you so much, Christine. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am Sarah Nash, the Dance Director, and I use she and her pronouns. I am a white woman with shoulder length red hair with bangs, and I'm wearing red lipstick, uh, big aqua patterned circular earrings, and a black sweater. And I'm seated, and my background is a blurred green and white room. I'm joined today by the other members of the dance staff who will each introduce themselves uh, later on in the presentation. And we also have Natalie Donovan, who is working behind the scenes today, running our slides. Thank you, Natalie. We hope what we'll share with you today um, will be helpful to you, no matter your familiarity with the process of applying. We know that it can be daunting. Um, there's a lot of different steps, different systems. Um, and the biggest takeaway we hope you'll have um, is that we're here to help. We're going to touch on a few of the basics of applying to the Grants for Arts Projects program, but we're mainly going to focus on the dance specific priorities and project types. Um, as well as covering tips for applying and applicant resources that you can access at any time. For help with any of the general um, GAP guidelines or process, you can access the recording of the general GAP guidelines webinar on our website at any time. We look forward to answering your questions at the end of the presentation. Please use the Q&A function rather than the chat feature to go ahead and put your questions in. And an archive of this webinar will be available on our website, as Christine mentioned. So you'll be able to access the complete webinar at your convenience or share with other staff or colleagues. We won't be recording the Q&A today. A note on the slides that we will be showing. They use a white background, and most of them have the NEA's logo in the bottom right-hand corner. They mostly include text boxes in a variety of colors that are kind of winter-themed, scarlet reds, rusts, darker blues. Um, and there are a couple slides with one or two graphics. We will be covering all of the text that's on the slides and what we relay to you verbally as part of the webinar. All right, let's get started. The National Endowment for the Arts is an independent federal agency supporting the arts in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, American Samoa, Guam, Northern Mariana Islands, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And each year, we award thousands of grants nationwide so that together we can help everyone live more artful lives. We are committed to diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, and fostering mutual respect for the diverse beliefs and values of all individuals and groups. GAP grantees include arts organizations, local arts agencies, art service organizations, local education agencies, and other organizations that can help advance the NEA's goals. Before we talk about um, Grants for Arts projects, or GAP, we want to make you aware of another grant opportunity at the NEA called Challenge America. Challenge America offers support primarily to small organizations for projects that extend the reach of the arts to underserved groups and communities. Challenge America features an abbreviated application, a robust structure of technical assistance, and grants for a set amount of $10,000. 
part one of the application is due April 25th, 2024. And part two, part two is due April 30th through May 14th. But please note, you cannot apply to both Grants for Arts projects and Challenge America. You have to choose one or the other in a calendar year. Please be sure to check the eligibility requirements on the website for more information. So the main subject of today's webinar is Grants for Arts Projects, um, GAP, as I mentioned, which is our largest funding opportunity. And it funds approximately 2,000 organizations each year through direct grants. Through project-based funding, this program supports artistically excellent projects. And grant requests can range from $10,000 to $100,000. GAP accepts applications at two different deadlines every year in February and July. Dance accepts all project types at both deadlines, and we receive roughly the same number of applications at each deadline. So the main difference between these deadlines for dance um, in terms of when you want to apply will basically be when your project can start. For the February deadline, the earliest allowable start date for your project is January 1st, 2025. And the July deadline, the earliest allowable start date is June 1st of 2025. The application submission process is a two part process. And you can learn more about all of the steps for applying on the recorded GAP webinar that's available on our website. Applications to GAP are open to both new and returning applicants. In order to be eligible to apply, an organization must be based in the United States and be a 501c3 nonprofit or a unit of state or local government or a federally recognized tribe or tribal community. And all organizations must have completed three years of arts programming prior to the application deadline. GAP does not accept applications from individuals, including those submitted by a fiscal sponsor on an individual's behalf. Commercial or for-profit enterprises are also ineligible to apply. New this year, organizations will no longer be able to submit an additional GAP application to Media Arts at the July deadline. We want to be sure people are aware of this change. Although the opportunity to submit an additional application through Media Arts is no longer offered, the NEA remains committed to supporting existing and new technology-centered creative practices across all of our artistic disciplines and forms, as well as to building arts organizations' capacities to serve a broad public by providing access, training, and other resources to engage with digital technologies. And now I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Kate, for our next section. Thank you, Sarah. Hello, everybody. I am Kate Folsom. I use she, her pronouns. And I am a dance specialist here at the National Endowment for the Arts. I am a white woman with long, dark hair and a wisp of bangs over my right eye. And I'm wearing orange lipstick and a black sweatshirt with white, orange, and blue embellishment on my left shoulder. And I'm seated and I have a tri-fold screen behind me. I will quickly guide you as to where to find the dance application instructions on our website. From the Grants for Arts Projects page, you'll find the How to Apply button on the left 
uh, excuse me, on the left sidebar, which includes links to information and resources. You'll scroll down to part one and two instructions and application questions, where you will find links to detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete both part one and part two of the application. Each discipline has their own instructional PDF. Some portions of the application differ by discipline. So be sure you are using the dance instructions when when preparing your sponsors for a dance application. Applying to the NEA is a multi-step process, and we won't go into the details of that process on this webinar, as this was detailed in the general GAP webinar that is on our website. Now I'm going to talk about the review criteria. All applications are reviewed based on two congressionally mandated review criteria, artistic excellence and artistic merit. Be sure to review these definitions and do not assume that you, if you have applied in the past, that the definitions are exactly the same. We encourage you to keep these criteria in mind while you are preparing your application. Artistic excellence includes the quality of artists and other key individuals, creative process, works of art, organizations, arts education providers, artistic partners, and or the services involved in the project and their relevance to the audience or community the project aims to serve. Artistic merit includes the value and appropriateness of the project to the organization's mission, artistic field, artists, audience, community, and or constituency, the ability to carry out the project based on such factors as the appropriateness of the budget, the clarity of the project's activities and resources involved, and the qualifications of the project's personnel and or partnerships. This also includes clearly defined goals and or proposed outcomes and the appropriate plan to determine if those goals or outcomes are met. This includes, if relevant, measures to assess student and or teacher learning in arts education. And it includes evidence of direct compensation to artists, arts collectives, and arts workers. If applicable to your project type, artistic merit can also include engagement with individuals whose opportunities to experience the arts are limited by geography, race or ethnicity, economics or disability, as well as the ability to strengthen the art sector through knowledge sharing and resources. NEA grants are federal and come with compliance requirements to ensure that everything we fund adheres to federal regulations. So when preparing your application, you're gonna to wanna to keep the following in mind. All projects must be both programmatically and physically accessible to individuals with disabilities in accordance with federal law, including the Americans with Disabilities Act and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. And while your applications may focus on a particular group or demographic, they may not be exclusionary under federal civil rights laws and policies prohibiting discrimination. So this extends to your artist selection processes, to audience engagement, as well as hiring practices. And projects that take place inside of or near a historic site or outdoors may be subject to additional review to ensure that they are in compliance with both the National Historic Preservation Act and the National Environmental Protection Act. And you can find links to pre-recorded webinars about each of these topics on the applicant resources page. There are restrictions on what we are able to fund as well. Some examples of activities or project costs that we do not fund include general operating, 
um, support. So projects should be for a specific set of activities. Support for a full season of programming. The creation of new organizations. Social activities such as receptions or, par or parties, galas, community dinners, picnics, and potlucks. Awards to honor or recognize achievement and lobbying, and that includes intend, um, activities that are intended to influence the outcome of elections or influence government officials regarding pending legislation. And that's either directly or through specific lobbying appeals to the public. This is only a partial list and a full list can be found on our website under the unallowable activities and costs page. And now I will turn it over to my colleague, Juliana. Thank you, Kate. Hi, everyone. I am Juliana Michelli, a dance specialist at the National Endowment for the Arts. And I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a white woman with long brown hair, wearing a black shirt and brown sweater. I am seated and my background is a blurred gray and white room. Um, we'll now talk specifically about the dance program at ENEA. We believe dance is a vital expression of culture and has the ability to create community, cultivate space for reflection and dialogue, and bring awareness to social issues through a variety of genres and practices. The nonprofit dance ecosystem is formed by dance artists and communities at its core, surrounded by the organizations and administrators that support their work. The schools, dance studios, and neighborhood centers where students and community members learn and train. The managers and networks that move dance around the country and the people and organizations who help make dance happen beyond, happen beyond the stage or studio. The dance ecosystem thrives when dance artists and the organizations, programs, and spaces that sustain and connect them work in equitable partnership with one another. The NEA strengthens the dance ecosystem by supporting applicants doing essential work in their own organizations and local communities that contribute to a more robust, equitable and accessible dance field that centers and reflects a vibrant, diverse spectrum of dance artists and that ultimately creates resilient artful communities. Proposals should address the areas of interest outlined in the general GAP program description and include one or more of the following dance priorities or project types. Disability-led projects or projects that meaningfully engage disabled artists and or students in pursuit of artistic and creative goals. Preservation, documentation, and archiving of choreography, performances, and other aspects of dance history in ways that increase the diversity of artists, forms, and cultures in existing archives, using archival practices that demonstrate cultural integrity professional artist development and services to the field that strengthen the professional nonprofit dance ecosystem for artists, such as programs that give artists time and space to make their work, convenings for artists and arts workers, arts leadership training and mentorship programs, as well as professional development services for artists that build their capacity to sustain a career in dance. Another priority uh, are creation and development of new dance works, especially by artists and companies who have historically been underrepresented through commissioning, rehearsal periods, residencies that support artistic research, creation, or technical staging, or uh, works made in collaboration with community members. The restaging of existing dance works, including in ways that reimagine and recontextualize works that have historically had harmful depictions of cultures and communities. 
the presentation and touring of dance, especially in communities with fewer opportunities to experience affordable live dance and or by artists whose work broadens the scope of dance available to audiences. We also accept education projects specifically designed to serve youth in their communities, especially in places where there are few opportunities for wide ranging dance experiences. Cross-sector projects with non-arts organizations that bring dance into the realm of science, technology, agriculture, and other fields through mutually beneficial partnerships. Advancing the health and well-being of individuals and communities through arts projects incorporating dance. And lastly, digital capacity building for organizations to create virtual or hybrid programming increase overall accessibility and or collaborate with other organizations using digital technology with dance. So we know that was a lot of information, um, but these are really the types of projects that we want to see. And so we encourage you to look at these priorities and project types as you assess what kind of project to come to us for. And these are all listed on the Indians website. The review panel will determine each application's competitiveness, but in general, strong projects will demonstrate, meaning they will show and not just tell, um, the following. So competitive dance projects will encourage the participation of artists, production staff, administrators, and students from a wide variety of aesthetic viewpoints, racial and ethnic backgrounds, economics, cultures, disability perspectives, and geographic areas. Competitive projects will provide direct compensation to artists and staff for their work on the project, especially to independent dance artists. Competitive dance projects will demonstrate mutually beneficial partnerships and engagement with artists, audiences, communities, and organizations within and across sectors that advance the goals of the project. Competitive dance projects will feature dance genres that have historically been underrepresented in national programs and systems of support. And for projects that involve the presentation of artists, a competitive application will clearly describe the selection process as well as the criteria used, including how you will ensure artists and audiences come from a wide range of backgrounds and reflect the audiences you aim to serve. And now I'll turn it back over to Kate. Hello, everyone. This is Kate speaking again. All of the application questions and character limits can be found in the FY25 dance application instructions. So you can start, excuse me, preparing your responses now. And I just want to make a point um, of a couple of questions that some of applicants don't always fully answer, and we just want to give extra highlight to. First is the project description. I think we need to go back a slide. Here we are. The project description. Here you will describe the project activities that will play, take place during the period of performance. So this is where you tell the story of your project. Start with the basics, who, what, when, where, and why. You can provide information on who are the artists involved, how are they involved, and how are they selected. What is the creative process? What works of art are part of the project or are being considered? Where are the activities taking place? What public or community engagement activities are you planning? Why this project? Why now? We encourage you to use plain language to tell us what you are doing and the activities that are a part of this project. The other question I want to highlight is engagement with intended community um, 
participants and audience. So in this question, you where, um, excuse me, you will describe the intended communities and participants and audiences that are involved in the project activities and how they will benefit. This is where you include how you will involve and accommodate people with disabilities in the planning, creation, and implementation of the project activities. So make sure you address this aspect in this question fully and not just address accessibility for audience members. We also mean accessibility for the dancers, the students, and your staff. Here, we will go over some general application tips for you. Don't assume the panel is familiar with your organization. Our panels are made up of people from all over the country with experience in many different parts of the dance field. Make sure your project budget, narrative, and work samples all tell the same story. They should all be in support of each other and give us a clear idea of your project. Be as clear and specific as you can. Talk about the how and the why, not just the what. List the artists and company fees and your budget individually as possible. At this time, the window for panel feedback has closed, but know that you can request feedback on both recommended and rejected applications from Juliana and myself. You can serve as a panelist to get an idea of the panel review process from the inside. So if you're interested, you can fill out the volunteer panelist form online, or you can send us an email at dance at arts.gov. In general, start everything as early as possible and give yourself plenty of time. The earlier you contact us for help, the better assistance we can provide. Things get very hectic right before the deadline. Now on to some work sample tips. Work samples should add an additional layer of understanding to your project. While we do have some parameters you must follow, the work samples you submit will be tailored to your specific project and will vary from applicant to applicant depending on your project. Panelists will spend no more than 20 minutes reviewing your work samples. Submit relevant, relevant samples to show the artistic excellence of the dancers, the performance, the instructors, as well as artists who are included in the project narrative. Avoid promo videos or montages with music overlaid video clips. Let the panelists experience the performance or engagement activity as it unfolds. Include captioning in your video samples where applicable for the accessibility of our panelists. If you are submitting a PDF with web links to video samples, please put all of that information into the PDF and clearly include passwords if there are any. For service organizations or projects that provide services to artists, Include the work samples which demonstrate artistic excellence of the services provided rather than a finished or in process outcome, artistic outcome. Lastly, do not include any press reviews, artist statements, or letters of support in your application. Dance does not accept these, and we will have to remove them prior to the panel reviewing your application. As always, if you have any questions about work samples, please feel free to email us. And finally, I'll turn it back over to Sarah. Thank you, Kate. This is Sarah speaking again. On the website, we have a section of FAQs and applicant resources both of which have lots of useful information. 
And you can access all of our recent grants through the grant search tool on our website at www.arts.gov. This might be helpful to see what kinds of projects and organizations have received support in the past. Some of the resources that you'll find on the applicant resources page include an application checklist for those of you who like lists um, that outlines each part of the application. There is an online tutorial demonstrating in detail how to use the grant application form or the GAF in the applicant portal. There's a guide for first time applicants. And there are recorded webinars covering accessibility, civil rights, and National Historic Preservation Act compliance. And lastly, there are also links to discipline-specific webinars like this one and office hours. And another applicant resource, us. So our contact information is on this slide and available on our website. Thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. We'll be moving into the Q&A shortly.